At IB Canada Group, we are your complete and independent source on the infinite banking concept, serving Canadians from coast to coast. Hi there, my name is Mike Sadu, and I'd like to spend just a few minutes today talking about the pressure on rising tax rates as a result of what has government done with our money. You know, most Canadians wouldn't find this to be a problem. And that is when you have a house, which is quite frankly the reality in urban centers like Vancouver, Toronto, where you have your house that's worth 1.6 million and you have a mortgage of just over $500,000. But most Canadians would see this as being a problem where your house value is about 567,000 and you have a mortgage that is more than three or about 300% of the value of your home. And in reality, uh, that's the pickle that the government has got into. Most websites uh, and sources will say that we're about a trillion dollars into debt, but that's only the net debt, you know, really after considering the government assets, whatever those are, and you can go to the finance website to see all this information and what they consider some of those government assets. But to get to the gross debt, let's zoom in here a little bit. And we find that as of March 31st, 2021, this was the gross government debt. And remember, this doesn't include all the provincial debt stacked up or territorial debt. So the written reality, how is government going to pay for this? It's a lot of debt. And in order to answer that question, we first have to understand how does government spend their money. What are the sources of government revenue? Well, number one, there's tax. Uh, tax determines how much personal or corporate profit is reasonable and anything above that line is, is taxed quite punitively. The number two way to uh, provide funding for government is to print money. And printing is essentially when the Bank of Canada manipulates the monetary supply and increases it to stimulate an economy. This is obvious inflationary consequences when you do it too quickly. Uh, borrowing is when the finance ministry is spending money it doesn't have. Now to compound the problem, the Bank of Canada acted as the government's primary funder in 2020, printing an unprecedented amount of money, more than it ever had before, to finance the government spending. All that new money started flowing into the financial and economic system. Having an increased supply of money really puts pressure on the financial asset prices, such as real estate and financial securities. When you have an increased amount of money chasing a limited supply of things, what do you think that's going to do to the price of those things? And this is where we are today. The Bank of Canada assets, they've been buying all these assets uh, during 2020, primarily government bonds. Now, how are they going to unwind this without creating a problem? You know, Canada is now caught in a classic Keynesian trap. They can't reduce interest rates to stimulate the economy ever more. So their choices are really limited to um, a jump in tax rates, massive cuts to spending, or continuing to borrow and inflate the, mon uh, the, the money, which it puts a huge inflation uh, pressure on. And of course, uh, the, the other option is uh, monetary reset, but I, don't th I think they're trying to avoid that at all costs, obviously. You know, the solution is really dealing with a financial professional that knows how to maximize your wealth and implement secure tax exempt strategies that work within the framework of the Income Tax Act. I would recommend that you find these practitioners of the infinite banking concept at ibcanadagroup.ca forward slash find dash advisor. And of course, if you have any other questions, please go to or visit our website and contact us. Look forward to speaking with you very soon. IB Canada Group, your independent authority for information on the infinite banking concept.